Cyril Garn has just had one of the worst interview moments I have ever seen a UFC fighter have. He has basically just openly admitted to ducking Tom Aspinall and Sergei Pavlovich for the most stupid reason I've ever heard in a very long time. I need to get this through to him. This is another one of these videos where I'm not going to make it entirely a hit piece. I want Cyril Garn to understand that he is wrong in what he is saying and what he is planning for the future of his career. Chael Sonnen beat me to this video today. Well done, Chael. But I'm going to knock this one out the park because Cyril Garn was asked by Ariel Hawani on the MMA Hour what was next for his career after beating Sergei Spivak. Bear in mind, he just lost to John Jones, dominantly in round one, by the way. Before that, he had another win against Taito Ivasa, who isn't doing too good right now, by the way, so that win hasn't aged too well, especially considering he got dropped by him. And before that, he fought for a belt again. So let's just see what Cyril Garn has to say to this question from Ariel. Okay. Um, it has been uh, 16 days since your fight. Any sense of what is next yet? 16 days. Just over two weeks. What's next for your career, Cyril Garn? Surely it's a matchup with Tom Aspinall. A matchup with Sergei Pavlovich. A matchup with a top contender. Because you aren't a title winner. You aren't a dominant champion for years. You don't get to just win one fight and immediately go right back into a title shot, especially because your last title uh, fight against John Jones was absolutely embarrassing for you and you lost by first round submission. What's next, Cyril Garn? Surely a top contender matchup, right? What did you say, sorry? And any idea what is next for you? I saw Tom Aspinall was there. It seemed like he was interested. And Ariel starts chucking out these names like Tom Aspinall's out there. Now, watch the body language of Cyril Garn the second Ariel says Tom Aspinall's name. I think Cyril Garn's got a good shot against Aspinall and Pavlovich. I do. He's a great fighter. I still believe that. He's an amazing fighter. And if guys aren't going to take him down, even though he just stuffed him against Spivak, he can, he can improve on the takedown defense. You know, I mean, he can win these top-level matchups. Look at his reaction as soon as Ariel says Tom Aspinall's name. Watch the body language of Garn. Uh, what do you think happens yeah, to next? Uh, I know a lot of people talk about Asmina, but... This Immediately itching at his eye and scratch... Uh, yeah, uh, no, a lot of people talk about Aspinall and this weird... Look at his face. <laughs> look at his face right now. A lot of people are talking about that Aspinall guy that called me out. Um, you know, uh, anyway, you know what I mean? Very strange. Yeah, what is next for you? I saw Tom Aspinall was there. It seemed like he was interested... Uh, what do you think happens yeah, to next? Uh, I know a lot of people talk about Asmina, but this is, doesn't make sense for me. How? How does this not make sense for you? This is how. I'm, I'm just being honest with Cyril Garn right now. Message to Cyril Garn. French fans of MMA. I did the same thing for Kevin Holland. You need to get this across to him. Manager of Cyril Garn. I know he's a big name. I know they want that French-speaking market out there, and Cyril Garn is the face of that because... French people on average are seeming pretty soy because we don't have many of them in the UFC that speak French. Um, but Cyril Garn is like the poster child for the French fan base that can break through into that French audience. And they need that right now. GSP was that. Not quite because he's French-Canadian, but Garn can open up a whole new market for them if he were to become champion. And he already has opened up that market. But I don't care how big of a name he is. If Garn doesn't take on an Aspinall or a Pavlovich uh, matchup next and says he's waiting out for a title shot, I can almost assure you the UFC is going to go, oh, okay, well, Jones beat Stipe. They both retired, so we're doing Aspinal Pavlovich for the belt because they both said yes to fight another top contender while you didn't have fun with Jailton Almeida coming off a win against Curtis Blades. I can see that being the reality so clearly in my mind right now. Anyone who's in the know, honestly, Garn should call out Pavlovich. I think that's the best matchup for him. A stand-up fight against a power puncher that maybe he could sort of navigate his way through, through the first two rounds and take advantage of a gassed-out Pavlovich in the later rounds of that championship fight. And then he would be undeniable to get a title shot upon his return. Doing this is a one-way street to a bad matchup against Jailton Almeida or Curtis Blades, whoever wins, while Aspinall and Pavlovich fight for the vacant belt. I'm telling you that right now. 
or while Aspinall and Pavlovic fight for the winner of Jones Stipe if they don't retire, but I doubt that happens. Like uh, like every time uh, with my management, uh, they did a really great job all of my career. You see, that's why it was really so fast. And now I just want to go to the bed. I'm number one, Katanda, he's number four. <laughs> yeah, but like, this is how it works though. Like, hey, Holloway, I need you to fly over to Paris right now and get through to this man. Holloway is a prime example of this. You know, I mean, he was a defending champion. He got his immediate rematch. He failed. You aren't a defending champion. You failed to get the belt in the first place. Holloway was still like, you know what? You know, the second, he could, he, everyone was saying the second vault fight was a robbery. I still don't think it was. I think it was 3-2 vault based on the last three rounds. A lot of people disagree with that. But I think it was a very close fight. There's an argument to be had for Holloway. And Holloway's fans and him made that argument. But still... As a number one contender, he didn't say, well, I've won one fight. Give me a title shot back. No. He beat Keita. He beat Yair. And he's, he's, he lost to Volk again. And what's he doing right now? Give me Arnold Allen. Give me TKZ. There's rumors of him fighting Josh Emmett. I don't think they're true. But either way, you'll be looking for another contender. Learn from this, Cyril Garn. This is not going to pay off for you. Okay? I'm number one. You're number four. It does not make much sense, you know. And it's just like, oh, my God, dude. That's how it makes sense. You don't get infinite title shots because you won a fight after losing a title shot. So I, I don't understand here. It doesn't make sense. I just want to go now. I did it already. Like uh, It was a big risk. Yeah, it's not like you did the UFC a favor by taking a big risk against Sergei Spivak. That's what you should have done. That's what you are entitled, you are inclined to do. That is what is expected of you. The bare minimum is like, what the hell, you know, I take on a top contender. Now I want a title shot again. Like, chill out. This is what you should have done. Now time to beat another contender and then you get your title shot. You do not get infinite, well, I lost a title shot. Let me win a fight. All right, another title shot. That's never been how it works. Very rarely is that how it works unless there's certain situations that call for it you know i mean i did i did this i took a big risk you know i took on a number four contender in sergey spivak and he starts talking about how he took on i've already beaten a, a contender where's my title shot this is one of the most like i don't know entitled attitudes i've ever seen to someone who i don't think has the power to be this entitled covington barely had the power to be this entitled and it almost didn't work out for him as well and everyone's raging about that situation and we still don't have a fight date signed cyril gone come on man what do you talk about i already took on a top contender it does not make any sense to fight another one i want my title you're number one uh, like you can't be like i only want to fight who is above me it doesn't make any sense you're number one in the rankings there's no one above you but the belt. You can't play that card. I want to look up in the ranking. You're not a surging Jack Della Maddalena 6-0 and at welterweight saying, yeah, I want to move up the rankings and I want to get a fight against a top 10 guy. You're not that dude. You know what I mean? You're now the top dog. You've got to defend your spot so you can earn a shot at a title again. Thanks. I just want to go now. I did it already. Like, uh... Like, I did it already. <laughs> well, you fought one contender. You fought one Sergei Spivak. Well done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, wow, dude. He's putting his work, everyone. Jesus, this is torture for him. Let's not put him through too much. God, he fought one contender, guys. Give him a break. How about try two, if you're lucky? Because I would have said three. You're two and two in your last four fights. You got dropped by Tui Vasa. And Sergei Spivak's morbidly obese. And I knew you were going to beat him. Either way, you're two and two. You've lost both title shots. Fair enough, you should have beaten Nganu based on round five. But still, you failed twice. What's the appeal? And another part of this, Cyril, listen to me, Cyril. Listen to me now, okay? When Jones retires, which he will do, they are not going to want you fighting for a belt and becoming champion, Cyril. You need to force it on them. They do not want someone who has just lost to John Jones to be the title holder immediately after John Jones retires. You've not just lost to John Jones, you've lost to, lost to Ngannou. They don't want you with the belt. 
You've got to force it. You've got to put in this extra work in the division. You're not going to get a layup for a title shot when you've lost to Ngannou and Jones. Ngannou's going to be at PFL and Jones is going to be retired. So one, you'll be in the shadow of, uh, shadow of John Jones. And two, PFL will start saying, well, we got the fucking best heavyweight in the world. They want Pavlovich or Aspinall as champ if Jones is not there. They know that. Don't do this to yourself. Think for a second, you frog. Jesus. Sorry, I don't mean to bring up some French slander, but Jesus. It was a big risk against this wrestler. So now I, I don't want to do, to make a, and to to have another risk. I just, I want to take a risk for, for something, so for a big deal, you see? <laughs> I don't want to take another risk, you know? Like, oh my God. And uh, and I'm st- I'm I'm gonna stay here for 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 uh, for a long time. So we're gonna have time with Thomas Pina for sure. We're gonna come. So no worries for the people. We're gonna do this fight. But now my my fight is not this one. I just want the bear and I want to go to the bear. Oh, dude, he's like uh, eventually. You know, Aspinall's right there behind you. Pavlovich is right there behind you. What do you mean? Eventually, you know. Sh- Eventually, we're going to make this fight, you know? It's like, no. Not eventually. It's right there. Pavlovich is number two. You are number one. What's this eventually? Eventually, this will happen. He needs to build himself up, you know? And it's just like, what? He's right there. You're right there beside each other in the rankings. This ain't Aspinall just made his debut being a big hyped up prospect. Eventually, you know, he keep building his career. He's going to rise up and we make this fight, you know. No. He's right there, ready for it now. And the UFC wants it now. And if you say no, and Pavlovich or Aspinall says yes, you know what the UFC is going to do? This is what the UFC does behind the scenes. I bet you this is what they do. They go... You know, they ask everyone, you ready to fight this guy? You ready to fight this guy? You ready to fight this guy? Three people. The two that say yes, they just match them up against each other. And the one that said no, oh, sorry, you said no. Oh, here's Jailton Almeida, dude. Have fun. You know what I mean? That's what you get as your reward for saying no. So so what are you saying? You want to fight the winner of Jones and Stipe? And Ariel was like talking to him like a baby, like, oh, what, what, what are you saying then? You want to take on the winner of Jones versus Stipe? You know what I mean? Like really trying to be polite with him. Like, how does that make sense? But Ariel don't have the backbone and spine because he's a worm to say, um, what are you talking about, you idiot? You're on a one fight win streak. <laughs> You're not getting a rematch against Jones. If it's possible, I don't, no matter who, like uh, anyone you were when I started my career, it was this anyone anywhere but now he's about the best anyone anywhere do you, do you think that there's a ch- there's some talk that both of them are going to retire after their fight in november is that better yes, for you if, if john isn't the champion is it better for you because no 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 no, way to, no yes it is because he dominated you and if jones is a champion he wants to stick around what are they gonna do hey aspinal pavlovich winner versus john jones is the new matchup that's a hundred percent what they're gonna do if Aspinall or Pavlovich beat each other and Jones wants one more, oh yeah, give me that guy I fucking choked out in two minutes with ease and exposed. That's not what they're going to do. That doesn't sell. The winner of Pavlovich Aspinall, if they KO each other, you know what I'm saying? If one of them KOs the other one, that's the matchup. We all know that's the matchup. Pavlovich or... Jo- People want Pavlovich instead of Stipe. Pavlovich is the backup opponent for that title fight. Oh, it's not better. If I can, if I if, if I got a chance to have a revenge to prove I can be better than the last time, that's good also. Yeah, you see. Yeah, I get that part of it for him, but it's just like people live under the like. You, this is the thing, life's not fair, dude. You don't get what you want. You have to live under the impression that you're not gonna get what you want, and then be happy if you get what you want. Put it out there in the world. I get it, Cyril Gun. Put it out there. Call for it. You have to live under the reality of maybe you're not going to get it. And then if it comes, it comes. Put it out there, maybe, with a little interview here or there. But you got to be... When the UFC is looking at this, they're going, he said what? That's what Dana White's saying right now in his meeting. So you spoke to... What we're hearing from Cyril Garn about what he wants next. They're looking at him, Aspinall, and Pavlovich's name at heavyweight right now. Ready to go. Ready to make another big matchup. 
They're looking at those names. So uh, Aspinall says anyone, anywhere. He'll take on anyone. Who cares? He's called out Asp. He's called out Garn, and recently he called out Pavlovich as well. And he's been scheduled to fight Pavlovich, so they know he'll fight Pavlovich. He's been booked to fight Pavlovich twice, but Pavlovich pulled out. Then Pavlovich, anyone, anywhere. He's being the backup opponent for Jones versus Stipe. And then what is Garn saying, by the way? Oh, he says he doesn't want to fight either one of them, you know. He wants to fight full belt and wait on sideline. Then they're just going to say, oh, really? You said that? Cool, dude. Well, here's Jail to Almeida. Uh, Stipe, that's good also. The last time, easy way. That, that, that's not my, my, my mind. I, yes, I want to go to the belt. I want to go to the short way. But if you can do it with a, with a big guy, that's better. That main event? I don't know. But... I prepared myself, like you see. Oh, uh, oh! Will he be the backup opponent? Ariel just asked him. Pavlovich is the backup opponent. I mentioned that earlier. We move on to another moment here, at seventeen twenty-three, which is another moment right around here. We never know. By the way, I asked you about Tom. What about Sergey Pavlovich? Does... What about Sergey Pavlovich? Does he interest you a little bit more than Tom? Seeing as he's higher ranked and being the backup opponent for a title fight coming up soon in November. Does that interest you more? Or same thing you want just to fight for the belt? Fight for the belt. That's comp that's really different. You have Thomas Pidal more dangerous on the wrestling. And uh, Pavlovich really dangerous like uh, with his striking. So it's different. Yeah, mate. Nice detract. Nice segue there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get away from the saying no to Pavlovich. You know, he's very good, you know. He's striking very good. He's grappling very good. Uh, but both can do can do everything. This might be the craziest part. Like you know, Aspinal is all stay really good on the, on the, with his fist and Pavlovich can wrestle. Um listen to this part. I think it's this part here. And both are really dangerous because uh you can see on on the on, on the in his career on the, uh, all of the uh, all of his fights and so you can see on their records, I skipped past there, that he stumbled. He's not speaking English, his first language. I get it. He said both of them are really dangerous and talking about how dangerous they both are. So... Oh, really dangerous fighters. Really dangerous fighters. So... Oh, no. <laughs> no, I <don't. laughs> So, no, no, I don't. Oh, I've never seen a blatant duck like this. They are both really dangerous fighters, so... No, I don't want to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, okay, dude. All right, dude. Somebody fucking fish up Parker Porter to take this match up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe Garn will say yes to a contender then. Or maybe he won't, dude. Parker Porter's coming for his title run. Who knows? But Jesus, man. That bit at the end there. So are you going to take the Pavlovich matchup? Do you think that's next for you? Would you take that matchup? All of the, uh, all of these fights. So really dangerous fighters. So no. <laughs> like I, he laughs at it because I think he realizes how silly it is. But come on, man, come on, man. We gotta get through to Gun because he's gonna get left in the dust if he keeps this up. They're gonna say, Gun, uh, Aspinall's down to fight. Are you? No. Okay. Aspinall, Gun's down to fight. Are you? Why? Yes, I am. I'm ready to fight. I'd fight anyone. You know what? Cyril Gunn, he's a great fighter. I'd love to fight him. And they go, all right, well, Tom Aspinall's down. Pavlovich, that's Baziba. He comes out as a Russian tip. Yep, cool. Sounds like a yes. Oh, Gunn said no. Looks like it's Aspinall versus Pavlovich for the vacant heavyweight world title. Well done, Gunn. See ya. You're number one. Your power is that you get number two or four. You're taking yourself out of that race. That's your privilege of being number one right now. Not that you get the title shot next. Your privilege is that you are first up for Pavlovich or Aspinall. They will take you considerate they will take you into consideration possibly first. That's your chance. Not for a title shot. That's not your chance. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Toodle Pip, I'll see you later. <sighs> Goodbye.